This one Tumblr PNG listing here on Etsy has now made me over $3,834. And when you take a look at many of the best sellers in my shop, you'll see that a majority of them fall into this positivity or inspirational quote niche. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to quickly make this design with AI and also show you how you can 10X your designs with a simple chat GPT prompt and also get AI to make the designs for you all at one time. If you are new to the channel, I am Bailey, the owner of Bailey Design Co, a seven figure digital design Etsy shop. And I now teach others how to create the same types of shops on this YouTube channel and in my online communities. So our first step is to have a great prompt. This is the one that I'll be using today. So to come up with prompts like these, I find it's easier to just describe exactly what you're imagining in the most detailed way. This includes everything from specific colors to sizing and positioning of the subjects and even what type of font you want the words to be in as well as that color. If you do struggle with prompting, there are many places to learn image prompting in detail here on YouTube, Skillshare, and in my own community if you are looking to create and sell designs like these. Once you have a great prompt, we're going to take it over to ChatGPT. This specific GPT, and the link for it will be down in the description, is going to scale out the prompt with different positivity quotes, color combos and different flowers so that we don't have to take the time to rewrite and change different parts of the prompt 10 different times. Just over here in chat GPT and I do have this custom GPT that is formatted specifically for my designs meaning that it is going to take that one initial prompt and scale it as many times as I need it to and also format it in a way that I can just copy and paste it so that I'm able to put it into my designs generator. So I've just clicked on analyze my prompt and help me come up with scalable designs. I did go ahead and edit this so I have an exact number of 10 because I want 10 different variations and then it just says okay thank you go ahead and put in what your actual prompt is so I copied and pasted that original prompt and then it comes out with 10 different variations. So as you can see, it replaces the text, the be kind here with several different variations. These are all pretty inspirational and motivational. Then it does change the different colors for the flowers as well as the actual flowers themselves. So my next step is just to copy all of these 10 different prompts. And then over here in my designs, I am just in the dream AI, which is right here. So if you were to log in, you'll just click on dream AI from the dashboard. And then I am copying and pasting all of those prompts. And as you can see, they do have specific spaces in there so that they will be able to generate all at once. Next, I'm just going to make sure that Dolly 3 is selected and the HD is selected because that is the image generator that I want to use. And then I'm going to make sure that the parallel prompt is toggled on here so that it generates them all at one time. My next step is just to hit dream. And in just a few seconds, I will have several different variations that I will be ready to move on and make seamless or not make seamless, depending on how you like to list your items on Etsy. They can be seamless or not seamless. However, I will be showing you how to make them seamless because I prefer to list mine this way as I see better sales when they are seamless designs. Okay, so now that all of these have generated, my next step is to set my canvas at the correct size for a 20 ounce tumbler. So to do this, I will just go over to templates, which is right up here, and then select custom size. So the size is 2790 by 2460 pixels. And then I'm just going to click on create. So now that I have my canvas set, my next step is just to go through all of these 10 variations. I did get two different uh, variations for each output. So some of them may use both of them and some of them I may just select one of them. But the primary goal right now is just to pull them into my canvas and to upscale them and then save at the correct size. So to upscale them, I'm just going to click on edit photo right here and then click image upscaler. 
Once that has upscaled, you'll be able to see it here in this little selection here. And then I'm just going to drag it out to fit the canvas and then reposition it till I think it looks good, which will be about right there. I do want to point out that I know that this looks like it's cut off, but this will be fixed in the next step in Photoshop when I do go in to make it seamless. And this is the part where if you choose not to make it seamless, it would just be this as the finished product and you could down load it this way and mock it up. However, as I said, most customers do prefer it to be seamless, so I will show that in the next step. Once it's positioned in the way that I want it to, I'll just click download up here, and that is it for that one. Next, I will just go through each of my designs and pick the ones that I like the most. I do tend to try to use as many of them as possible so that I am not wasting any credits, and you really never know which ones might end up selling well or if it comes out with a completely new saying, people might like that versus being always shown and sold the exact same Let It Be Tumblr app, for example. So I haven't seen this one as a specific example. This one was the Be Kind one, and I really liked the way that this one turned out just because it has like a holographic glitter background, which is really, really popular right now in the terms of style on Etsy with digital designs. As you can see, this is another Be Kind option. However, it is a completely different color palette, a different honeycomb pattern in the background and a different position for the words, which is why even though some of these might be duplicate in terms of the saying, since the design is completely different, they still will work. Another good thing with this one is that it is technically already seamless because none of the sides of the design are cut off. So this one will just be a leave as is design and there isn't much to do as far as editing. This one is a really good example of one that did not come out with words, but just because it doesn't have words doesn't mean that it's not usable. And I am fairly certain that this one will sell regardless of not having any words, just the pattern or design itself will sell. And so I am going ahead and using this one as well. And this is its pair that was supposed to have the words. Well, the other one was supposed to have the words, but B, the change was supposed to be the text on this one. This one might be a little bit tricky because the bottom would tend to be cut off. So looking at it now, um, even though I could move it up, it just doesn't look exactly right with that part of the design cut off like that. So I'm actually going to skip this one. This is a, another really good example of one that didn't come out with any words, but the overall pattern and design is really cute. So I'm going to save this one as well. So this one, the prompt was supposed to be be joyful and obviously it has a very bad misspelling. So this one could technically be fixed in Photoshop or with Canva's Magic Grab, but for the sake of trying to make this as quick as possible, I am not going to save this one, though I probably will save it in my own to fix later, but um, this could be easily fixed in Photoshop or in Canva if you have that. It did go ahead and do let it be again, which is the original prompt, which is fine because this is a completely different variation. And I really like this one because it actually made the bees be sparkly as far as on their body part right here and in their wings versus the background like it was doing with some of the other ones. This is the second one to the let it be one. And again, this one could be fixed or I could leave it with the B's with the extra E though it just looks a little bit too confusing. So I am going to go ahead and skip this one for now though I could possibly use it again in the future. Again, this one is a really, really good example of just one that came out without any text or words, but it has a really, really good background and the bees are really pretty and the flower positioning is something that is unique compared to a lot of the other ones that came out. And this was the one with the text for the one that I just did. It was supposed to be called Be Wild. The reason I'm not going to save this one, even though I really like this one, I may try to put the prompt in and generate this one again, is because if I went to go and change this in Canva, it wouldn't pull in this type of color and texture on the font or on the text. And that is part of what makes this design really unique. So I will save this for now and maybe regenerate it 
in just a little bit to see if I can get something to come out with that one. This one is the next one and it is Be Happy and this one obviously has a misspelling as well so it will have to be skipped for now. Though this one turned out perfect and it's a little bit small but some people tend to like the more minimalist, smaller type quotes or sayings on tumblers right now versus it being really bold like it's traditionally been. This one came out with a completely different style than what we were seeing, but it is a really unique, more geometrical type design with what it did with the wings and this part up here. So a super cute design um, that is really different from the other ones. So definitely going to keep this one. And it kind of just by switching it out or moving it up, it kind of got rid of that weird like little block of color at the top. So that way it is just all one color. And then you're still seeing all of the honeycomb pattern in the background. This one did not finish the text, so it should have been sweet as honey. So this one would be a really easy one just to add honey right here in the bottom with a script font. So I am just going to go ahead and add that real quick after I upscale this one. So to do this in my designs, I've just clicked on text over here and then add text. And then I'm just typing out the word honey and then I will switch it to a script font, something like this will work, and then just place it down underneath the other text. I did go ahead and switch the color to match the color of the other letters and then downloaded this one as well. So this one was Be Yourself and it turned out really cute without needing to be fixed or anything. So just have upscaled this one and downloaded this one as well. Again, this second Be Yourself one turned out really cute as well, so definitely not going to waste this one. Have upscaled this and downloaded this one as well. This was the Be Inspired one, so again, something that turned out really, really nice and really unique. And the second Be Inspired one turned out really nice as well, so I am saving this one. I really liked what this one did with the flowers as far as the two tones. So that is something that is different compared to some of the other ones that have popped out. And then finally, there was one more Let It Be one that I went ahead and chose to include as well, just because a couple of those other ones didn't work, but I liked how this one turned out with the different honeycomb colors mixed throughout with the glitter ones and overall just different types of flowers as well. So this one got saved as well. So now that all of these are saved, it is time to move over to Photoshop to make them seamless. So again, this is a personal preference. You do not have to do this step if you do not want to make your design seamless, but I highly recommend it as far as just based on experience of what sublimation um, crafters like to purchase um, in terms of full wrap tumbler designs. They do prefer them seamless most of the time. And so that is why I choose to make mine. I did have this preset already as far as one of the canvases that I have um, preset, which is a typical tumbler wrap. So that is either the whether you're doing this in pixels, so 2790 by 2460 or 9.3 by 8.2 inches, it's the same either way. And so my next step is just to grab those designs individually in and add them here. And then I'm going to use Photoshop's AI to fill in the design and make them seamless. So to do this, I'm just going to make sure my move tool is selected up here and then I'm going to just grab the design and move it over halfway. It will clip in where it is exactly halfway. And then I'm going to control C, control V, which is just copy, paste and duplicate so that I have the back of the tumbler, tumbler essentially right here. So this is what you would see in the back of the tumbler, which as you can see, it's a very harsh line and it is not seamless. So to fix this, you'll just want to use the marquee tool, which is the little rectangle one up here. And I'm just going to grab this, which is just, I'm just selecting it and grabbing it down. It's just a rectangle. 
and then clicking on generative fill and then I don't even type anything in here and just click generate. So what this is doing is Photoshop's AI tool is matching together these parts to make essentially the design seamless. And as you can see, it blended together parts of the petal that were cut off, parts, well, it kind of added a wing here that wasn't there before, um, and then blended in the parts of the honeycomb and any other parts of the flowers or plants. You can actually toggle through one, two, or three, or generate again if you don't like this specific version. So I'm just going to click through to see if I like any of the other variations better. So I actually like the third one the best just because it doesn't have a lot of messy area right here. I usually only try to grab as little as possible so that it doesn't have too much to make into a mess kind of is what it's doing when it's trying to blend this together. Um, the only thing that is a little bit off is this extra wing, but I'm just gonna take it as one of the wings of the bees fell off here and so it blends in the way that it does. So my next step is just to click on my layers over here on the right. So I'm gonna click on the generative fill layer, the original side and the other side, highlight all of those and then click on merge layers. So now that is one piece. Then I will just go back up here to my move tool, make sure that's selected and do control A, control J and delete that generative fill layer. Now I can just grab this and I'm going to move it back the way that it was originally so that if this is the front of the design where you would see it at the middle of the tumbler and then the sides, you can kind of tell both of them would line up to match either side. So then I'll just grab those two layers, merge them together, though you don't technically have to, and then save as a PNG. Since I have bulk mockup, which is the next step to bulk mockup all of these in general so that they are ready to list on Etsy, I have that installed here in Photoshop. I want to just drop all of my new designs that are now seamless into this one folder here. So that is why I save them to a specific design folder so that they can all be bulk mocked up in one try. You do want to make sure that this is saved as a PNG and then name the file whatever you want it to be named when you add it to Etsy so that you don't have to go back later and rename a bunch of these files, especially if you upload them to multiple places like your own site or other marketplaces. Now that that one is finished, I will just repeat the process for each of of those and drop them all into that same designs folder. So now that I have all of my designs made seamless and I ended up with 12, so more than 10 because I ended up choosing um, several of the double outputs, both of them, um, even though I didn't use some of the ones that had messed up the text and could have changed those or fixed those later, that still could be done. Um, so I wound up with 12. So my next step is to bulk mock these up. And as I said, I do have bulk mock up installed. If you do not have this or are looking to learn how to use this, I do have a full video about that right here. So you can watch this after, but it is really simple you just set up three different folders and then add your mock-up. It, it does have to be a smart object mock-up to be able to work with bulk mock-up, but once you just set it up once, it is super quick. So I've just selected bulk mock-up from my plug plugins here and then click start generating. And as you can see, it works through each of the designs that I have put into that designs folder. And it's actually mocking it up on three different mockups that I have in my folder, which is one that is plain without any of my logo or branding. One that is a flat lay mockup, which is like a flat piece of paper showing the design in its entirety. And the reason I do that one is so that they can see that the design is seamless or not, because you can see both sides of the edges as it's working its way through if it lines up and matches the other side. So now as you can see in my export folder, which is one of the three folders that you'll set up with using bulk mockup, you will have three different mockups for each of the designs. So one without the logo, one as a flat lay, and one with all of my logos. So 
a total of what would that be 36 different mock-up images that were all created within just a few minutes and now they will be ready to list over on Etsy all in all this took me about 15 minutes to make 10 high quality listings ready to be added to my Etsy shop and if you are looking to learn how I actually go on to make sales super fast with three different ways then be sure to check out this video here and thanks so much for watching